So by the end of this session, um, we're going to have some very out sounding lines, but again, they're going to be very in from a particular standpoint from the melodic triad perspective. Gary, good to see you, man. Thanks for joining us. Um, and what I mean by that is that we're not going to use, uh, well, I guess there is one root structure triad, but we're mainly going to use upper structure triads. Okay. And we're going to do it in a way where we're sort of tonicizing some pretty odd upper extensions. It's just going to come across hopefully as melody before we end with this. But let me talk you through the basic theory of what we're going to do. And then we'll try and just get into playing as quickly as we can and give you some ideas for how you can accomplish this. So we're taking this major triad tension flat two that we've been talking about for the last couple lessons. And we're just going to apply it to all four of our chords. We're going to do a two, five, one, okay, in the key of, um, C major, and then we're going to do a flat three diminished. That's this, the chord we're going to create, we're going to imply the sound of to turn us back around. So it's not a two, five, one, six, it's a two, five, one, flat three diminished. So that means D minor seven, G seven, C major seven, E flat diminished. Now over D minor, we're going to play an E major triad, okay? If you think about E, G, sharp, and B, the three notes of E major, if you could imagine your hands playing a piano, even if you're not a piano player, if you could imagine playing an E major triad over a D minor chord, that's going to create a 13, sharp, 11, and 9, okay? So this is a fully extended D minor chord. tension flat twos today for each of the chords. Okay. You could apply, uh, was it Monday we did that finger exercise game? Right, we could apply that whole riff in the key of E over a D minor chord. the two chord over G dominant we're gonna get uh, we're just gonna keep it simple with this one G major tension flat two this is root structure okay nothing fancy here so we're gonna go if you have a, a sheet of paper or pencil you might want to jot this down um, I didn't put this part in the PDF but maybe I'll add it in and have it ready in the archive when we launch it uh, the PDF if you need it is just showing you the basic positions of how to play a major tried tension flat two you can grab that in the description uh, so we're, our, our chord progression so far is D minor 7 to G7, 2-5, but the melodic progression, the triads that I'm going to be thinking about and looking at are E major to G major. Okay. Daniel, I agree, man. It, uh, the flat 9, I mean, you can't go wrong with it. Um, and I... I You've been hearing me for a while, so you know, like, I so much prefer the sound of a G major triad flat 2 over a G dominant chord versus a G major triad flat 7, right, like a dominant 7 arpeggio, because that just sounds so obvious, so expected. It just sounds so much like an arpeggio. That flat 2, especially when we ignore the flat 7, 
a flat two, there's just something so quirky about it, so unique, it just kind of pops right out. Uh, for the C major seven, we're gonna do our C major seven, sharp 11, sharp nine chord. We're not gonna use the primary quadratonic. We're gonna use this quadratonic, so it's B major, tension flat two. flat chord, E flat diminished, which is our turnaround chord to get us back to the two. We're going to use D major tension flat two. Okay, so I'm going to go back over those real quick. We're going to hit each one of these once. It's just going to flow once we get moving with it. E major tension flat two, G major tension flat two, root position, root structure, B major tension flat two, D major tension to. Again, this is D minor 7, 2 chord, we're playing E major, tension flat 2, for G7, just a plain old G, root structure, G triad, tension flat 2, for C major, the 1 chord, we're going to play a B major triad, tension flat 2, and for E flat, we're going to play a D major triad, tension flat 2. It's a lot of information, if you're new or even new-ish, to our approach, to our way of thinking, this is going to sound really confusing and absurd and silly and probably really complicated. Once you get acclimated to the idea of using melodic triads, voice leading with triads, um, using quadratonics to create melodic tension and resolution notes, this kind of stuff will make a little bit more sense. This is the slowed down version of what this will sound like. Once we get it moving, I'll throw my looping pedal on so you can hear me play over this with the basic chord progression happening behind me, but nice and slowly, here's E major. inside of any of these four quadratonics, meaning that we can connect any of the notes within a quadratonic, like here's the E major, tension flat two. I can connect the seventh fret and the fourth fret. I can connect any of these notes. sharp walk in chromatic lift to the B note, the fifth. Right? Or I can use a chromatic line to connect me from one quarter tonic to the next one. So if I'm going from E major to G major. semblance of triads anymore. Now it's just complete 
modern, out, heavily chromatic lines. I'm basically free to use any of the 12 notes over any of these chords, as long as it's in the context of um, staying within this melodic progression, which is E major, tension flat 2, G major, tension flat 2, B major, tension flat 2, D major, tension flat 2. Okay? I'm going to put my looping pedal on. I'm going to play over this a little bit so you can hear the vibe it creates. Um, this might be a little bit fast for this will be a little bit fast where you guys are, so that's okay. Just listen, hear how this sounds, and then I'll maybe I'll reset the loop at a slightly slower tempo, and we'll talk about kind of more rubato and ballad tempos to help you guys get started. Okay. Um, I had this going a few minutes ago. Tonal stuff okay. to basic old G major over G7 to B major over C7 to D major over E flat diminished. setting this to a slightly slower tempo and we'll just kind of wrap up in this very open-ended thing. Uh, maybe I'll try to offer a few steps for getting this stuff happening. Step one is make sure you can see these triads. Forget about the quadratonic. If you can't see E major, G major, B major, D major, E, G, B, uh, B, D, E, G, B, D. If you can't just see those, lead over it, nothing. 
nothing is gonna work. So work on those first. Forget about the flat twos if you need to. I'm just voice sitting pure triads right now. structure triads, then you can try adding in the flat two. I wouldn't worry about chromaticism. So just the pure triad, then just the pure quadratonic, then you can insert chromaticism when you're ready. Let me try and slow this loop down a little bit so you can hear these move and then we'll wrap up. stuff but hopefully you can hear that it's obviously uh, not your traditional 1357 chord tone running we're not really outlining anything and what we are implying is very out but nothing is really like atonal okay there's a there's a lot of rules being followed here we're just essentially playing around mainly in the upper structure of these chords Right, the D minor quadratonic is giving us the 9, the sharp 11, the 13, and the minor 3rd. So I'm organizing it in a way that it's making it sound very uh, three-dimensional and colorful and deep, but these are all chord tones. The sharp 11 is a little odd, but there's nothing that weird about it. Uh, so the, the D minor, we're relying heavily on the minor 3rd, the 9, sharp 11, 13. The G major is just the root third, fifth, and flat nine. The C major is a little quirky. The C major, well, it's really not that out. It's the third in the major, oh uh, no, we're not using the third, excuse me, that's not our primary quadratonic. It's the major seven in the root, so those are strong chord tones. The sharp nine is a pretty uncommon note to use for major seven, but it shouldn't be, it's a great note. And the sharp 11, that's pretty common. And then for the E flat diminished, we're using the major seven, the root, the minor third, and the and the diminished fifth. So it's basically, I mean, it's essentially root, third, fifth, major seventh, which is allowable, that's in the key. So none of these notes are really that out, it's just the way they're being organized is so uncommon to the ear because we generally think one, three, five, seven, or scales. And here, I'm not using either of those. Here, I'm using the triad. That's like the king of everything. It's keeping everything organized. Then I have my primary tension note, okay, which is creating a little bit of diatonic sounding drama. And then I have all the other remaining notes that I can insert chromatically. So I'm, I have access to all 12 notes, but in a very organized way, which I'm using to create a very out sound. 
A lot of little baby steps happening here, but I just wanted to point out some fun ways that we can use this major triad flat two to get some pretty hip sounds, okay? Um, play around with it, see what you can come up with. Try applying it to autumn leaves or a blues or whatever kind of standard you're working on. Um, it's gonna be very unconventional sounding, okay? If you leave some of the chromaticism out, it'll be a little bit less aggressive, but it will be very unconventional. So if you're into that kind of playing and that's what you're looking for, then this is a good place to look. Um, gonna have to wrap up there. Michael, thanks man. Andrew, that sounds amazing. Can't wait to catch up to this. Uh, yeah, you know, one step at a time. Hopefully, I mean, you've been with us long enough, you know, like this is really nothing different from anything else I ever talk about. So the most basic fundamentals that we would use to play very in sounds, we can just tweak them ever so slightly and all of a sudden we get this kind of playing. Uh, so have fun with it, take it slow, leave questions in the comments section, I'll try and get to them, and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow for some comping ideas. Happy practicing. Hey YouTube, it's Jordan Clemens with NYC Jazz Guitar Master Classes and the Melodic Triad Study Group. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. I have a ton of content coming out on YouTube this year. We've been doing daily jazz guitar lessons. So I'm gonna be posting videos like this pretty much every day. So if you dug this and you wanna follow me, subscribe and make sure that you turn on notifications so that you can watch more videos like this. Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you in the comment section. Hope to see you in the next video.